and welcome once again to Chikara's Podcast A Go Go, your weekly dose of Chikara's brand of pro wrestling. My name is Gavin Loudspeaker. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up is Anniversario, May 19th in Easton, PA, and May 20th at the Highline Ballroom in Manhattan. Be a part of Chikara's 10th anniversary, our big annual birthday party, Anniversario. Today on the podcast, we're going to take a look at 3.0 and their little adventure up in their home country of Canada. Now, they have been on a long quest for the tag team belts, and the last time they got a title shot was about a year and a half ago. They came up on the losing end of the stick. Well, in Vaughan, Ontario, they got their second shot at fist, but they were thrown a last-minute curveball when the injured Johnny Gargano was replaced with Icarus. Let's take a look right now at 3.0 versus fist in Ontario. Icarus pushes Taylor out of the ring, sends Matthews out of the ring. Folks, it feels like it's 1993 all over again. What a rush cover! Come here! Oh. Come on, no tag! Let's go! So close to the new champions, she caught a thing. Thought he was going for a power bomb there. Taylor gets out of it. Connects with that super kick. I don't know if he got all of it. Oh, Soul Food does connect though. Not enough to take Parker down. Icarus now could be going for the Blu-ray. His variation of the DVD. And just crushed him in that corner. Just smushed him and he hooks the legs. No! It kicked out! Look at that smug look on the area as his face connects with the pedigree cover. And Jagged kicks out of the pedigree. Mantis, I don't know how he did it. Nor I. But smartly rolls to the outside, letting Shane Matthews become the legal man of this contest. Shane Matthews, a man who runs on a steady diet of no sleep and Red Bull. Oh. That could be the end of 3.0's championship dreams, but thankfully no! It's not over yet, Chikosa! Chikosa, this thing can still go in any direction! Wait a minute, Icarus going into his boot for something here. Tiny shoe. Meanwhile, the corner there. That's an interesting bootlace that he has there, man. I don't know why you're making excuses for him. Boston Crab! He's trying to turn Chuck Taylor over. Yeah. Chuck Taylor fighting it, though. Bryce doing his best to get a good look there. Well, what is this? You can't do this. I'll tell you what's telling something about. I don't think you should do that. Oh. Chuck Taylor wrapped around his fist. He just decked Shane Matthews. He, he had a change for Carson, I think I saw it. But it didn't matter, he still kicked out. As I was saying before, Shane Matthews running on a steady diet of Red Bull and no sleep. It's gonna take a lot to stop him. And wait a minute, why are the tag belts still at ringside? Well, that's odd. Seems they shouldn't be there. Icarus just tried to drill Shane Matthews with one of those belts. But runs into the waiting arms, and he rolls him over with a Boston grab. Ray D's in a ring position there. What? What? Oh, no, I can't believe it. And we have two champions.
you have it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, 3.0, taking the tag team titles in their home country of Canada, cementing their role in Shikara history. However, ladies and gentlemen, the title reign was short-lived. They lost the belts to Fist, the team of Chuck Taylor and Johnny Gargano in Lafayette, Indiana. However, on that same night, ladies and gentlemen, the Young Bucks picked up their third point towards title contention, and they will get to face Fist at our iPay-Per-View, Chikarasaurus Rex, June 2nd in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. However, 3.0 have lost all their points. They have to start from scratch. In New York City, they are going to take on the team of 17 and Shard to get their first point back towards title contention. Right now, let's take a look at 17 and the Shard as they took on Hallow Wicked and Mantis in Ottawa, Canada. I'm just doing my job here, Tim. I'm trying to call the action. That's what you're supposed to be doing here today. You don't have a match. You want to see, see, you want to see action? Put me in the ring with that man, Hollow Wicked. I'll show you freaking action. There's the tag to Hollow Wicked. He's in the ring right now with both members of uh, this Kikito tandem here. Shard takes a boot right to the face. 17 comes in. Side set by Hollow Wicked. Step up. Nicely done with the Frankenstein in there. Hollow Wicked boots. His kicks are vicious. All I want is a chance to get one, huh? Give me a wink, give me it, or else I'm going to start doing things myself. I'm going to start doing things my own way. Oh. Well, I guess it's for the best. Dots is leaving the commentation station, but I don't know where he's going. Dots, what are you doing? Oh, he just, he's been sitting here for the last five minutes, prattling on like a crazy person about that cup, and the moment that Hollywood is indisposed, oh, wait a minute. Mantis sees him, they just swung at him with the staff. Folks, again, things have been breaking down here with these Dikido members. Hollywick has been left by himself. Ultramantis Black just chased Tim Dunn backstage. He left the cup here. Palm strike there by 17. Super kick by the Shard. And they're victorious again. That's two points. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You just saw 17 and the Shard of Gekido. Wherever Gekido goes, mayhem and destruction and chaos seem to follow. Seventeen claims to know 17 forgotten holes in the world of wrestling, and he's, well, used one of them on Lightning Mike Quackenbush, putting him on the shelf indefinitely with an injury. And then in Chicago, we saw the debut of Wrestle Factory graduate Tien Long and the demise of Wrestle Factory graduate Tien Long at the hands of another one of these deadly 17 maneuvers. What the future holds for Gekido, only time will tell. But we'll see you, Chikara fans, May 19th in Easton, PA, and May 20th at the Highline Ballroom in Manhattan for Anniversario. And we'll see you next week right here on the GoGo. -Go.